Hello folks, welcome back to Heroic Elite Comics. Today, prepare for an electrifying showdown as we delve into the intense face-off between Marvel Storm and four Omega-level mutants in the thrilling spectacle of Fall of X. You won't believe what's in store for you with this comic. The ending is gonna blow your mind, seriously. So, here's the deal, X-Men Red is part of the Fall of X event, but it's kinda separate, you know? Now, let me fill you in on what's happening. So, the story continues with the Civil War on Mars. Yeah, that's right. While Orcus is attacking the X-Men on Earth, there's a whole bunch of mutants living on Mars, and they're facing some serious trouble too. They've been there for a while, but now they're being targeted and wiped out. Basically, war has reached the doorstep of those mutants who made Mars their home, or at least the ones who are still surviving. So, Sazaya of the Smoke, she's this mutant with Nightcrawler-like powers, right? Well, they're all supposed to evacuate because there are these four super-powerful mutants called the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. And guess what? Their mission is to wipe out all mutants on Mars and take over the planet. Talk about motivation, right? But here's the twist. Sazaya is like, hold up, we can't leave just yet. She's got something important to do. Apparently, Robert DaCosta, Sunspot, locked away this ultimate weapon called the Arenos Trigger. And get this, it was entrusted to them by Aurora Storm right after Judgment Day. And guess what? We totally predicted it. In the comments, we were like, hey, they're gonna bring in Uranos during this war. And boom, here it is. Now, for those who don't know, Uranus is like a demon, a real powerhouse. This dude could probably take on Thanos and crush him without breaking a sweat. Seriously, it wouldn't even be a competition. So in this comic book event called Judgment Day, the Avengers, the Eternals, and the X-Men all went to war against each other? That's crazy. And during this war, the Eternals unleashed Uranos, this super old Eternal who's like the ultimate weapon. He controls all kinds of weapons, ships, you name it. But here's the really scary part, Uranos is basically death personified. When he was released on Mars, he wiped out like 98 to 99% of the entire population in just one hour. Even guys like Magneto couldn't stand a chance against him. Talk about being overpowered. But then, after all that chaos, a peace treaty was made between the Eternals and the X-Men. And as part of the treaty, the mutant population was given the Uranus trigger. This trigger allows them to call upon Uranus for help if they ever need it. So if something crazy goes down and the mutants need some serious backup, they can activate the trigger and Uranus will come to their aid for one hour. That's pretty epic, right? And that's where they're at right now. He talks to Sazaya because she's not the one with the authority to make the decision. But what you do end up doing is switching over to the four horsemen launching their attack. Their powers are overwhelmingly strong, and they are all Omega-level mutants. Death has the ability to remove his helmet and this results in the death of anyone he looks at, unless there is a reflective image around. War can force anything to combust, while famine controls water, including the ability to remove water from sentient beings' bodies. Pestilence possesses the ability to create any disease or bacteria. As the battle begins, Sazaya is talked to, as she is not the individual in charge of the decision-making. The battle soon intensifies, and the power of the mutants makes it difficult to keep them at bay. Death's power is particularly strong, and the chances of survival are low when he removes his helmet. In contrast, War's ability to make things combust is uncommon and makes it difficult to combat him. Famine, although a hydrokinetic, has immense power and can control water beyond that present in human beings. Lastly, Pestilence can create deadly bacteria and viruses that can cause death within seconds. These Omega-level mutants are incredibly strong and difficult to battle, and their abilities are unique. Their skills are beyond the limit of an average mutant, and even one mistake can result in catastrophic destruction. The fact that they do not seek acceptance for their power shows how confident they are, with their abilities being proof that recognition and approval are not necessary for success. Storm, the leader of the mutants defending their home base, faces off against Famine and Pestilence, who are causing destruction with their powers. Storm acknowledges Famine for revealing her merciless nature and vows to show no mercy in return. The Four Horsemen, claiming to be the true Omegas from the Dimension Araco, challenge Storm's authority. 
Storm, quick-witted and fierce, reminds them of their betrayal when the Annihilation Helm took Genesis. She points out that their allegiance was to power, not family. In the midst of the intense confrontation, Storm emphasizes that battles among Omega-level mutants aren't just about raw power, but also about versatility. Storm brilliantly uses her control over weather, pressure, and temperature to take down two Omega-level mutants within a minute and a half. This remarkable feat showcases Storm's newfound strength, and the narrative captures the essence of her overpowering presence. Al Ewing's storytelling shines as Storm demonstrates her prowess, making her feel truly formidable after a long time. The engaging battle unfolds with Storm asserting her dominance, challenging the Four Horsemen's claims of being the kings and queens of their world. The exchange of powerful lines adds depth to the narrative, with Storm cleverly exposing the Horsemen's true motives. The reader is left wondering about the significance of the Annihilation Hell and the dynamics between these characters from Morocco. Storm's retort, highlighting the importance of versatility in mutant battles, raises intriguing questions about the nature of their powers. When death arrives, things take a scary turn because this character is not someone you want to underestimate. Death doesn't just rush in and start causing chaos, he's all about making a grand entrance. Unlike pulling off his helmet and going on a rampage, he values the honor of the battle. That's why he challenges Storm to a one-on-one -on -one fight. This aspect makes him intriguing yet deadly, similar to the inevitable defeat when the Dallas Cowboys face any NFL team. When death challenges you, your demise is almost certain. Adding to the tension, Pestilence enters the scene and shoots an arrow at Storm. Richard Ryder, who has been working closely with the mutant population on Mars, steps in to shield her. Unfortunately, he takes the hit and begins succumbing to the effects of Pestilence. This twist intensifies the situation, showcasing the peril faced by the characters. In that crucial moment, Storm attempts to reach Richard, wanting to fly him to safety. However, Death sternly warns her against touching him. He explains that if she does, the deadly plague will spread to her, leading to her demise. Here's the twist, Death turns on his own sister. Surprisingly, Death's actions aren't driven solely by romantic feelings for Storm, although he does have a soft spot for her. It's about honor, the core value that matters most to him. Pestilence's betrayal of this honor, the code of honorable combat, pushes Death to take drastic action. Unveiling his face, Death's power overcomes Storm, causing her to disintegrate. It becomes clear that Storm would have faced a similar fate if not for this brief reprieve. In this crucial moment, Suzaya arrives on the scene, presenting Storm with the Arenos trigger. Suzaya, clearly fed up with the ongoing situation, entrusts Storm with the authority to make decisions. Storm, tired of the conflict, is handed the trigger and urged to take charge. Uranos, an enigmatic figure, communicates directly with Storm. He acknowledges their past encounters and reveals he's been observing her circumstances. With no preamble, Uranos proposes a solution, release him, and he promises to end the war by eliminating everyone not aligned with Storm's faction. The trigger, a powerful tool, now rests in Storm's hands, and the choice is hers to make. Uranos issues an ultimatum, emphasizing that if she chooses to release him, he will fulfill his promise by eliminating all opposing forces. The gravity of Storm's decision becomes evident, the fate of countless lives hangs in the balance. A surprising shift takes us to the Autumn Lands, once home to the Autumn Palace on Mars. The Ken Gate opens, allowing individuals to travel between dimensions and locations. A mysterious voice raises a question about the Baron lifeless rock below the imprisoned sun. The response indicates a deserted but valuable ingredient, and with the impending storm, a plan is set in motion. The voice expresses a desire to remake the world, teasing the return of the real apocalypse. This revelation contrasts with a previous projection seen in the immortal X-Men comic. The anticipation builds as the autumn lands become a focal point for significant events. A looming question emerges, what will unfold when Apocalypse confronts Uranos in a battle of titans? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to like my video, those tell YouTube that more people should watch my videos, and hit the bell so you will get a notification as soon as my videos post.